Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Wendy Chen. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in today's show, New York City volunteers in the United States are holding a blessing ceremony to commemorate the 9-11 victims. In our continuing series on invading species in Taiwan, we learn how smooth cord grass is a great threat to our wetland ecosystems. And a unique express delivery service in Taipei's Beitou District offers a variety of different services for local residents. Eleven years ago, terrorists attacked the Twin Towers in New York City, destroying our sense of peace in the world. Today, the U.S. government has reconstructed the site where the towers stood into a memorial site and museum. Although many people died in the tragedy, the silver lining was the goodness of people everywhere that poured in in the aftermath of the event. To commemorate the day, the New York City chapter held a blessing ceremony to honor the 9-11 victims. 地主是不是？啊，也因为九一一呢，我相信震醒了很多人。I believe September 11th made many people rethink the rights and wrongs of love and peace. Two very prominent trade centers were gone from the terrorist attacks, and now a new landmark has been erected. This is moving forward. Although we can't prevent disasters from happening, but we will hope in these times we can continue to grow and learn from our past mistakes. Because Master Zheng Yan instills in us the belief that the Dharma will continue on. In the United States, at the site of the National September 11th Memorial and Museum in downtown Manhattan, we are reminded of not only the pain from 11 years ago, but also the need for self-reflection. Over the past 11 years, Ziji volunteers worldwide has continuously prayed. We are still praying today, probably until infinity. How much power are in those prayers? I believe everyone knows that prayers can move mountains. This is how Mr. Zheng Yan leads us volunteers in prayers, spreading compassion and hope. This year, the New York City chapter held a Lunar Month Blessing Ceremony for the local community and at the same time paid their respects to those who lost their lives on 9-11. Eleven years ago, on September 11th, a tragedy happened. Let's pray for every one of the victims. You show that in the face of the evil that occurred on September 11th, that there are good people in the world, people who care about our earth, about compassion and human services. And to me, that's the good part about the tragedy that occurred on uh, September 11th. At the blessing ceremony, 200 people gather to pray and send blessings to those who have passed on. I was very emotional and cried emotional tears, the kind you feel towards a parent's gratitude. <laughs> Every apple represents a promise to start a vegetarian diet. And at the parking lot behind the chapter building, residents come together to enjoy a vegetarian luncheon on a relaxing afternoon. Holding high the light of wisdom and praying for blessings, a wish is made for those who have passed on to be forever at peace. In 1997, city volunteers in China established the Poverty Alleviation Program in Guizhou Province to help local residents live a better life. Before school starts, city volunteers from Guangdong also arrived in Luodian County to sign a scholarship program contract with the local government. From this moment on, City Foundation and the government of Luodian County in Guizhou Province will be working together for the 2012 scholarship program. Guangdong City Volunteers also sees the opportunity to visit needy students and government officials to make sure we don't miss any needy students that have the potential to strive in the future. Teachers and school directors have gone through various processes to pick the neediest students. Luodian County's Educational Unit established plans to prevent scholarship recipients dropping out. The volunteers also held study groups in hopes of encouraging more locals to become volunteers. I want 
I hope starting from today, we can start encouraging more people in Luodian County to become Siji volunteers. All of you are willing to become Bodhisattvas in Luodian County. Siji volunteers have been spreading the good work in Guizhou for more than 10 years. However, this is the first time they have held a study group. The event attracted many local teachers and scholarship recipients who came to express their thanks to Ziji. I am very happy to have received help from Ziji's aunts and uncles when I needed the money to pursue higher education. I will cherish every moment so I don't waste the love and care of my parents and Ziji's aunts and uncles. The love and care from Ziji touched every one of us in Luodian County. Thank you, Ziji, for giving the needy children a chance at an education and helping the poor residents to have a place called home. The love and care from the volunteers give children in Guizhou a chance at an education and helps them see a brighter future ahead of them. After signing the 2012 scholarship program contract with Luo Dian's educational unit in Guizhou province, city volunteers also visited needy students in the remote areas of Longping and Yanping for a home visitation. Upon hearing the Ziji volunteers coming, Huang Haiguan goes out to greet them. His father is a farmer who cannot pay his children's school tuition. <laughs> Wang Jiawei is another recipient. He lost his parents when he was still little and was raised by his grandparents. This year, the harvest was good enough to feed the family. However, Jiawei's tuition still needs Ziji's support. We give him 236 US dollars every year and distribute the money over four periods. Oh, Yang Yunming has been a recipient of Ziji's scholarship since junior high school. Recently, she hasn't been doing well in school. When the volunteer visit, they also give encouragement. You need to study hard. You still have brothers and sisters to take care of. We'll visit you four times a year and always be around. In Luodian County, many families cannot afford their children's tuition. Yang Jin's family is one example. Her father is paralyzed and bedridden, and her mother runs a small grocery shop. Though the family receives government funding, tuition is still a problem for them. Ziji will take care of your family and children, so you don't have to worry. You just rest. Regardless of the difficulties, city volunteers do their best to help children find a better future. Staying in China beginning September 9th, the newly established Suzhou Ziji Health Promotion Center has been holding free checkups for their long-term care recipients, seniors from local nursing homes and local residents. Here's more. Early in the morning, Shen Linghu is already waiting in front of the village for the Ziji volunteers. Recently, the first Ziji Medical Center, the Suzhou Ziji Health Promotion Center, was established. The volunteers quickly spread the good news to locals and their old friends. <laughs> Shen Linghu and Fan Hairong are both long-term Ziji care recipients. The two are physically challenged. Nevertheless, they remain optimistic. At the day of the free health check, the Suzhou Ziji Health Promotion Center is filled with laughter and people. For Shen and Fan, the trip to the center is more like visiting old friends. <laughs> At the center, participants feel that there is no boundary between doctors and patients. <laughs> the doctors are not only here to cure sickness, but to educate the locals on how to take care of themselves. 
They hope the local residents can learn to build a healthier lifestyle. City's long-term care recipients such as Shen Linghu and Fan Hairong continue to witness the love and care from the doctors and city volunteers. report on our series on the invasive species in Taiwan, we travel to Jingmen where we find the smooth cord grass. Perfectly adapted to the coastlines, the quick growing smooth cord grass has started to push out local vegetations and its spread is now threatening our wetland ecosystems. Jinmen lies only two kilometers off the coast of China. As a result, seeds produced by vegetation in China will often be carried by the wind or water to land in Jinmen. This is the smooth cord grass, also known as marsh grass. It is native to the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. Reproduction is through the seeds released annually or directly through the plant's roots. Smooth cord grass has a high saline tolerance and thrives in the muddy flats found near bodies of water. In 1979, smooth cord grass was introduced in China to protect coastal areas against erosion. However, its growth soon began to clog harbors and rivers, threatening coastal maritime traffic. Wherever there is a coastal basin, the smooth cold grass can be found. They are first found in small isolated groups before becoming connected in an unbroken sheet. Smooth cold grass can be found in 13 areas with a total area of 30 hectares. Besides Jinmen, smooth cord grass can already be found in Danshui, Taizong's Gaomei wetlands and Zhanghua's coastal regions. And its steady incursion into Taiwan's coastal intertidal zones has exceeded predictions. The smooth cold grass usually spreads from a small grouping to an entire area. What's more, there might be several of these small groupings that grow about 10% in area each year. Later, as these individual groups combine to one, we can see how growth rate accelerates to even higher than 10%. This is a newly grown sprout from this year. Here you can see how it is already sending out a new sprout. Just one smooth core grass can send out multiple lateral sprouts, which themselves will send out new sprouts. With such powerful reproductive model, it is not surprising that the smooth core grass continues to make inroads into Taiwan and its outlying islands. One, Taipei's Beitou District has a unique delivery service that has been around for many decades. Whether it is paying a utility bill or catching the MRT, or even buying snacks in midnight or emergency visits to the hospital, all you have to do is call the express delivery service and let them know your needs. Let's take a look. Oh, this is the A customer will call in and tell us they are at Beitou Stronger Street and they are waiting in front of which store and we will get there in about three to four minutes. A motorbike and two helmets, this is the Unique Express delivery service available in Beitou of Taipei. Yeah. 
It is more convenient to catch a ride from them. If you're running late, you will get to the station in about two to three minutes, whereas it will take 10 to 20 minutes to walk. With the convenience of the bikes and the locals knowing the roads in the back of their heads, whether it is going to school, catching the MRT, buying lunch boxes, or paying utility bills, the delivery men provide a variety of services. The tarpaulin set up under the tree is where the store sits, and on its wall, the last four digits of the number is the store's name. 70-year-old Wang De Ming has been in the industry for 42 years. Beitou is situated in a mountainous region where traveling can be inconvenient. In its heyday, when the service cost $5 dollars a trip, Wang was able to make $6,000 a month, which was more than a bank manager. <laughs> Back in the early 70s, Japanese people all loved coming to Beitou for a drink and women. In the Japanese colonial period, Beito was known as the hometown of hot springs and karaoke singers. The hotel would call us and we would take these ladies up to the mountain. As Beito's hot spring resort began to disappear, Wang Deming began to serve his neighbors instead. <laughs> When a customer goes to the hospital, often their children will have gone to work when they return home, so we will send a strong guy to carry him from the ground floor to the floor he lives on. At night time, when customers get a ride from us home, we will wait until they get inside the apartment before turning around to leave. We need to ensure the safety of our customers. In the hearts of Beitou's residents, this unique express delivery service is an irreplaceable part of their lives. At the 15th annual Zhou Daguan Foundation Love of Lives Award Ceremony, we meet one of this year's awardee, Jared Gossens from Australia, who is an adventurer. He serves, runs and pilots planes, all while being fully blind. Gossen lives by the philosophy of success is a journey, not a destination. An ultralight aircraft. Gerald Gossens of Australia is no ordinary pilot due to a birth defect that left him blind. He became the youngest recipient of a guide dog in Australia, and he achieved exceptional grades in school. Now he is the deputy CEO of the Royal Blind Foundation. From the age of 16 onwards, I have achieved more than I achieved in the 16 years before that. Um, really, the mobility, the independence, the self-esteem, and the confidence is, is remarkable. Gossens continues to raise funds and brings awareness of Australia's growing blindness problem. He also represents Australia in the Paralympic Games and his favorite sport of running, as his wish is to encourage others who might be physically disabled to follow his lead and not be restricted by obstacles. If I can't see, I can also do many other things. I can hear and I can touch. So there are many ways a person can get over things apart from seeing them. Gerald Gossens loves nothing more than a good adventure. From the ground to the sky, he flew 1,600 kilometers around Queensland and holds the Guinness record for flying fully blind. It's regretful that his daughter is also blind, but besides inheriting her father's condition, Taylor has also inherited his love of adventure and sense of courage. Together, they will continue to break the stereotypes that many have of the blind. In Taiwan, 25-year-old Xiao Qian, who is slightly mentally challenged, has been working at the bakery opened by the Maria Social Welfare Foundation. She hopes in the future she can open a bakery on her own and continue to make delicious pastries for her customers. <laughs> I 
I am Xiao Chen. I like to make bread. Working inside the bakery, this is Xiao Chen, who has been working here for the past six years. However, when she started the job, she couldn't even count the amount of items. Before, I couldn't count the amount of items when we had too many of them. Xiao Qian, who is slightly mentally challenged and shy, couldn't find a job until she attended the pastry class opened by the Maria Social Welfare Foundation. Here, she found self-confidence and even received a license as a pastry chef. When she faces obstacles, she's willing to face the problem and keep on trying. At the bakery, Xiao Qian gained self-confidence. However, she hasn't been very happy because the oven at the bakery hasn't been working very well. Our oven is a second-hand oven. It is 15 to 20 years old. We fixed it three times already, but I think the oven just can't take the load anymore. Xiao Qian hopes the bakery can soon get a new oven so she can continue to make tasty bread and moon cakes for her customers. I made these mooncakes. They are very delicious. Please try them. In Malaysia for the past nine years, city volunteers in the Malacca chapter have been making charity mooncakes. This year over 200 volunteers are coming together to make 32,000 mooncakes over a 10-day period. The money raised from the mooncakes will then be used to construct a new city office in southern Malaysia. We don't need to rest, we just need more energy to make more mooncakes. That's the spirit motivating city volunteers to make mooncakes for charity at the Malacca city chapter every year. Over 200 volunteers are going to make 32,000 mooncakes over 10 days. Although they don't talk much, they have built up a close partnership. Everyone calls me mom. They care about me very much and often ask me if I'm thirsty or if I'm hungry. Praising the pastry and putting in the fittings, the volunteers work together like a family. <laughs> I feel very lucky to be with the other volunteers this year because I just survived a car accident. I cherish their companionship. It feels like home here. I'm really happy. We are family. We're making mooncakes together. Though Moon Festival is two weeks away, the volunteers already share a sense of reunion. Staying in Malaysia at the end of our program, to promote the benefits of vegetarianism, city volunteers recently invited 100 local residents to enjoy a delicious meatless banquet at the Batu Pahat City Liaison Office. Volunteers also shared with participants how their health condition has improved through the vegetarian diet. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.